Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is um, a practice uh, for Unit 6 on geometric sequences. Okay, so here we go. So it's talking about bouncing balls. So when you click uh, the little begin symbol there to come up with this, and sorry it's hard to read, but it says uh, each time a ball bounces, it rebounds to a height that is the same percentage of the previous height. So for example, if a ball is dropped a height of 100 inches, and then if it bounces up again to a height of 60 inches, then its rebound is 60%. So 100 is, you know, 100%. And so whatever's uh, the number after that is your percentage. So uh, then on the next bounce, it'll rebound to another 60% of 60, which is 36 inches. So in other words, um, the height of each bounce of the ball will always make a geometric sequence. In this example, it was 100, then 60, then 36, and then whatever 60% of 36 is would be the next height, and so on. Now, it's not necessarily 60%. In fact, in this example, it won't be. You'll see. So for many professional sports, the bounciness of the game ball is uh, cl uh, cl sorry, carefully regulated. So we're going to choose one of these um, uh, balls for sports right here uh, and investigate the bounce. So uh, we have basketball, tennis, or table tennis. I'm going to choose basketball because um, I like I like tennis. I like table tennis too, but basketball is the first one. So let's pick basketball and this little area will come up and then let me enlarge that so we can read it a little bit better. Okay, so it says, according to official guidelines, a regulation basketball will bounce or rebound 54 in uh, inches if it's dropped onto a court from a height of 6 feet, which is 72 inches. Okay, so all measurements are taken from the bottom of the ball. So when it bounces up, so it, it starts at 6 feet and it goes down and then it bounces back up, which is 72 inches. It bounces back up 54 inches and it keeps doing that. So assuming we have a regulation uh, uh, basketball, how high do can we expect the ball to bounce on the 10th bounce? Okay, okay. so here we are. So it says uh, circle the ball that we chose. Well, we chose the basketball right there, so I'll circle that right there. And then uh, they give us some things. So what do we know? Well. We know this. Let me go back to the data right here. So um, when it's dropped from a height of 6 feet or 72 inches, it bounces 54 inches up. So a regulation basketball will bounce 54 inches if dropped onto a court from a height of 72 inches, which is uh, 6 feet. So what do we want to find out? Well, we want to find out how high the ball will bounce on the 10th bounce. So what kind of answer do we expect? Well, something that's positive, I know that in inches, and it's, it's going to be much less than 54 inches because it keeps bouncing less and less and less and less and less, okay? So assume that the ball rebounds the same percentage on each bounce. So use the initial drop, which was 72 inches. Uh, height and the height after the first bounce, which is 54 inches, to find the common ratio. Okay, so it says common ratio is the basically the, the height of the first bounce and where we started the 72 inches. Okay, so here I, when I teach this in class, I like to list them as a, a numbers in a row like this. So here's the first number, here's the second number. Okay, and then what I do is I say R is the right number divided by the left number. So I'll put 54 four over 72 and then punch that in a calculator so if we punch that in a calculator 54 over 72 we get 0.75 and it said round to uh, three decimal places so that's why I left it 0.750 I'm just following their instructions right there okay all right something I often overlook but Anyways, that's why I put uh, three decimal. State the general version of the recursive formula. Okay, well, the recursive formula always deals with the first term, and then the, this is called the term before the a sub n. So your next term is going to be the term before that times whatever r is. Okay, so a sub n is a sub n minus 1 times r. Now, recursive formula always lists the first term. Some of them list the first two terms. And then you start using the recursive formula. So here's the first term, which was 72 inches. And then every term after that is the term before times r. In this case, it was 0 0.750. So find the recursive formula for the height of this ball or basketball. Remember the first term, a sub 1, which was uh, um, uh, the 54. And then, uh, well, a sub 1 is 54. And then every term after that is 
0 0.750. So, so a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 times 0 0.750. This says your nth term is the term before that times r. That's what that says. And, and the first term is a sub 1. Remember, we started with a sub 0, which would be 75 or 72 inches. Anyway, so we're going to fill out the table for our ball's height after three bounces. Okay, and no, we're going to let n be the bounce number. Okay, so here's the bounce number. So the first bounce was 54 inches. Okay, and then the second bounce is we take this and multiply it times r. Remember, r is 0.75 or 0.750. So 0.75 times that is going to get us 40.5 inches. That's how high the second term, the second bounce our ball will go. The third one is going to be the second one, the term before that, times r. So I'm going to do point or 40.5 times 0.75 or 0.75 times 40.5 and we get that. So there they are, the heights after the first three bounces right there. Okay, so now we're going to write the explicit formula. Remember the explicit formula is your nth term is the first term times r to the n minus 1. Now, students ask me, why is it n minus 1? And I just say, because it is, okay? If, it, if they give you, um, uh, I, I'm just, for now, for this one, let's just say yes, because, okay, sorry. So remember that the first term is a sub 1, and the height of the ball is, um, is um, uh, the height of the ball after the first bounce, okay? So this is 54, because that was the height of the ball after the first bounce. So here we go. And then R is 0.75. So I'm going to put in 54 right here, and then 0.75 in parentheses to the N minus 1 power. There it is. That's our answer right there. It's that easy. So um, uh, you just go the first term times R to the N minus 1. Okay, now we're going to use that formula. Uh, to find the height of the 10th bounce, because that's what our initial question was. What's the height after the 10th bounce? Okay, so remember, here's our formula. Okay, a sub n is 54 times 0.75 to the n minus 1. So a sub 10, uh, I should have put a 10 in right here. That's what this should say. This should say a sub 10, sorry. I should say a sub 10 is, is you know what, I'm just going to copy and paste so it stays there. Anyway, so the next one's going to be a sub 10. Now, this is going to be 10 minus 1. We've got to do this expression first. The exponent, 10 minus 1, is uh, 9, okay? So it equals um, 54 times 0.75 to the 9. Okay, now we have to get our calculators out. And my calculator is on my phone. It looks like this, okay? And if you turn it sideways, it looks like this. It adds some extra features right here. And I'm going to use, let me enlarge that right here. I am going to use, where is that guy? It's right here. It says x to the y. So I'm going to punch in, um, uh, I'm going to punch in the power. You got to do the power first. So I'm going to go 0.75, hit that x to the y button, then hit 9, and then equals. So again, 0.75, x to the y. So that's this button right here, x to the y, sorry, this is a, just a picture, I can't do it. So 0 0.75, I'm going to go 0 0.75, then I hit x to the y, and then I hit 9, and then I hit equals, and it's going to give me an approximate answer of 0 0.075, okay? So this squiggly line means approximately equal. You have to do this exponent first. So 0.75 to the 9 is 0 0.075. And there was a whole bunch of decimals after that. I just rounded it off to that. Then I'm going to go 0 0.075. I have that with all those decimals in my calculator. And I'm just going to hit times 54. And then, when I, and then equals, you get 4.05 inches. Okay, so the 10th bounce is going to be 4.05 inches. All right. All right. So what are some factors that could affect the ball's bounce and, and why might a ball's uh, bounce higher or lower than the regulated height? Well, there's all kinds of things. So how much uh, how much air is in the ball? How much was the ball inflated and the material that's used on the ball um, uh, that could affect the bounce how where you are? I mean, it probably bounces different from say Sacramento all the way up to Lake Tahoe where it's much higher in elevation. Temperature would probably affect it, humidity. So there's all kinds of things that might affect it. I'm sure you can think of some others, but there's some examples right there. So for the sport that we chose, which was basketball, 
why would it matter if a player used a ball that bounced higher than the regulation? Well, there's all kinds of things, you know. Typically, slower balls uh, that are, have less inflation in them are easier uh, to manage because they give players more control and time to react to the balls. Faster balls that are probably inflated much more are more unpredictable. Oops, there should only be uh, uh, pre... Sorry about this, you guys. Uh, dictable, sorry. Uh, 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 they're just faster, and so it creates more of a challenge, and players get used to a certain amount of a bounce right there anyways, and they would need that consistency in their game. However, you guys, um, uh, since both sides are playing with the same ball, they're either both going to be, be equally helped or hindered. I don't know if you've heard of, uh, what do they call that, Inflate Gate, one of the Super Bowls, um, or no, no, one of the playoffs before the Super Bowl. Uh, it was, they were accusing the, the winning team that they inflated the ball more or less inflated the ball more. And one of the quarterbacks got to, got to practice with that change in ball and they didn't see that until the game was over. Anyways, hey, I hope that makes sense and take care you guys.